What's up everybody? Today, I'm gonna to show you what I got going on. Jose came by a few days ago to drop off about eight or nine rods. None of them are Senko sticks, but we work on all rods regardless. What he wants me to do is add keepers to all of these rods. We're gonna take this rod. This is a Dobbins rod right here. And as you can see, this is a closed style hook keeper. And what he wants is an open style. So we're gonna put an arrow style hook keeper on there. And what that's gonna do is if you have a Senko or a speed worm or any kind of Texas rig rigged up and you don't wanna pop your hook point out of that bait in order to use your hook keeper, that arrow style is gonna allow you to keep Keep your hook point inside of the plastic and it's literally just you're going to be able to just slide the back of the hook on that arrow style because it's open so we're going to show you how we're going to remove this style hook keeper and put an arrow style on there we're going to take some pliers a torch you got to be super careful with the heat you don't want to heat it too much what i'm going to do is i'm going to break this side because this is where i'm going to put the new hook keeper and what i'm going to do is i'm going to cut but i'm going to cut along the foot of the keeper and what that's gonna do is that's gonna prevent me from scoring the blank. You do not wanna score the blank, especially on a brand new, beautiful rod like this. As you can see, I got that, that's exposed right there. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna heat it up. That's gonna loosen up the epoxy a little bit. As I heat it up, after that, I'm gonna grab the keeper right here and I'm gonna pull this direction at like a 45 degree angle. That's gonna pop this out and this is gonna slide right out. Again, you don't want to go crazy with the heat. I've done a million of these, so I kind of know what's enough. And when I coat over that, you're not going to be able to see that white. It's going to look just like it did before, but without that top part of the keeper. So now what I do is that was enough heat. It's still a little warm. I can feel it. And I'll typically start peeling it away. I try to stay away with the razor blade for this part just because, again, you don't want to score the blank. So what we're going to do now we're gonna put the rod in the power wrapper and I'm gonna match this green. That is almost identical. Once I coat it, it's gonna look really good. I'm gonna add my trim. We'll do a separate video on how I do this, slow it down. But typically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a trim band on both sides of the hook keeper. So I'm gonna find the middle. I'm going to place it on the bottom side of the blank. That's just the way that I typically like to put my, where I cut my tag end off. All right, that's good. I'm going to go to the top side of the blank, grab some tape, grab my hook keeper, and I'm going to just make sure I'm center with the top of the rod blank. And we are going to put this right there just like that right. wrapping this now Make sure that that hook keeps your center again. And I'm gonna double wrap it. Another thing that I left out, I grind the keepers. These don't come dremeled. So I use a dremel tool and I grind that down so I can get a smooth transition from the rod blank to the foot of the keeper. I'm gonna grab my pull through. This is four pound braid, it's great. Get that right to the edge. Cut my tag end. All right, I'm doing my trim bands real fast. Do one side, I'm gonna do four. Pull it through. Number one, I like to use a light, bright yellow for my pull through because I lose it a lot. All right, I'll get this other side done. Cut my tag in. Again, it's on the back side of the rod. 
and it'll look super clean from the top. Just burnish that a little bit. Like I said, that little area where it looks damaged, once I coat it and epoxy it and it soaks into there, you're not going to be able to tell. We will get back to you with the finished product. Stay tuned. All right, so just an update here on Jose's rods. They're all finished. I double wrapped each one of these keepers. We trimmed it with that green to match the best we could. And just to go over a few other things that we did. So there was five Dobbins keepers that I added. They had hook keepers, but they were just that closed style. This is a favorite rod that I did. We added a hook keeper over here as well. There was one up here and it was like backwards. A little bit of a different design. This Okuma, we added a hook keeper. And then on the six cents rod, there was two guides that I repaired. I repaired this guide right here and the first running guide from the tip top. One more thing I wanted to go over real quick. I do these all the time on your traditional reel seat. This was the first time I did it on the Okuma and I'd say that came out pretty sweet. I mentioned in the previous clip about the heat shrink and that this was my first time doing it on something like this. That's because Okuma has like a pr proprietary blend reel seat that's uniquely shaped. So I actually put the heat shrink on there and I was able to cut around it and clean it up nicely. I used black pigment epoxy and then I filled up little cracks with EVA dust. I think it came out super sweet. These grips are great. Like I said, with age, they just get better. When you guys give me a bundle of rods like this, you're gonna save money because I can kind of knock it out at the same time versus if you just do one guy. If you have any questions, let me know. Tight lines.